Hello Awake Humans. Whether or not you believe the apocalypse is nigh, a good skill to have either way, knowing how to suture. So I went to the Brooklyn Brainery to show you how. This is Umut Sarpel, a surgeon in New York who taught the art of suturing class at the Brooklyn Brainery. So no, I did not make this up. Umut is going to teach us how to suture by having us practice on bananas to simulate skin, just like they do in med school. But first, your tools. You'll need suture material or a thread. It should be medical grade nylon or silk, but if you need to use your sewing kit thread or dental floss, just make sure it's as sterile as can be. Then you'll need a needle. It should be curved. You could use a straight one, but it'll hurt like hell. Next, you'll want what's called a needle driver. You can use tweezers or something else. It's just a lot easier to be precise if you have something to hold onto your needle besides your grubby hands. Next, the basics of lining up skin. You'll want to bring skin edges just together, not any tighter than just touching. You'll also want the edges to meet as flatly together as possible for the least bumpy scar. And you'll want the skin to come up a bit, not go under, to keep out bacteria and to let white blood cells flow underneath. To determine how many stitches you'll need, use this as a guide. The first stitch should bisect the wound. Then the next stitches should bisect those two halves and so on. You'll want to remember to use the least amount of stitches possible as each stitch is a new trauma to the skin and you want to minimize that. This will also ensure an even distribution of stitches, which is also ideal. Okay, time to stitch. Hold down one end of your stitch material with a rock or book or whatever. Attach your needle to the other end. Hold your needle driver or tweezers like this. With the tip of your tweezer or loader, grab about halfway down the needle. Lift the edge of the skin a little bit like this, which is gross and painful but helpful. Then cock your wrist and drive the needle into the skin at a 90 degree angle. Don't let the screams distract you at this point. Once the tip pops through, don't grab at it. Keep pushing the needle through from the other side. Making sure to follow the curve or path of the needle as if it's one fluid motion. You don't wanna yank on the skin or pull the material another way because this will add more trauma and again, you want to cause the least amount as possible. Next, it's time to tie off. Figure at least four knots to be safe. Leave an inch or two of tail. Take your needle driver or tweezers, wrap your thread around it twice. Open the needle driver a little bit, grab the tail and pull it through and lay the stitch down. Then for your second knot, wrap your thread around only once, going the opposite direction, pull through, and now you're back to your original position. For your third and fourth knots, you only have to wrap your thread around the needle driver or tweezers once. Then you'll want to clip the thread down to about a half inch left. Ideally, you'll want your knots not directly on the laceration, but off to one side. And that's all there is to suturing, besides the screaming and the blood and whatnot. So now you know how to sew your own leg back up after throwing yourself over a barbed wire topped chain link fence in search of a couple cans of tuna. You're welcome.